Um, all right, welcome guys to tonight live stream. Today we are taking a look at Solo by Audio Imperia. This is their brand new, uh, what they call lyrical and expressive soloist library, and this is um, this is really a library that I am excited about. Um, I, in a way, I hunt for solo libraries because <laughs> they are. Uh, they add so much life to uh, to your uh, to the composition and to stuff. Hold on, let me make sure this is tight. All righty, all righty. Well, let's get started here with uh, with our live stream. So we are taking a look uh, look at Solo, and this is a library that it, right now it's on sale. It's on. I think it's either the Enterprise or it's just sale in general. Uh, but we are. Um, able to buy it for about 200 bucks until it will go back up to 300 which is actually still an okay deal to be honest if uh, if I were to um, if you ask me so this is a uh, they advertise it as a there's a 13 incredible expressive and lyrical soloists so there's 13 instruments five mic positions and two ready-to-go mixes classical and modern which is something that we've been using uh, with Audio Imperia, they have been doing this classical, classic, and modern uh, mic positioning, which works actually pretty well in their new UI. Two types of long-form true legato for all instruments. We're going to take a look at that earlier. It's actually really cool. Um, and uh, we got additional articulations and sound design and about 90 gigabytes uh, of content Um and yes, at the time of my, uh, the time when I um, downloaded this, it was actually, it was about 90, it was like 87 or 88 gig gigabytes of stuff. Um, okay, so let's, let's take a look at this. I'm just going to go ahead and close this. We are in our DAW. I'm going to activate my other camera here and as soon as we open our uh, beautiful uh, beautiful libraries we are greeted by we got multi patches let's see we got single patches we got sound design and by the way I did go through the library uh, before just so you guys are aware I I went through it I uh, so I'm already integrating it into my VEP template um, which probably should give you a um, <laughs> it should give you an idea of uh, yes it is a good library <laughs> it works really well uh, there's some really really great content here um, and we're gonna compare it with and you know we're gonna you know we're gonna compare it with the Cremona quartet as well so um, a lot of uh, cool stuff um, there is all other instruments other than strings it's not just strings by the way it's uh, strings woodwinds and there's brass there is uh, vocals uh, it's it's a really really um, library. It's, it's a very full content library sort of thing. Um, all right. So let's look at, so the multi patches are basically the same patches that we're going to find in there, but they have all the articulations inside. Um, so what I want to do is actually for the purposes of, uh, just showcasing the library, um, we are going to do the multi patches and just to show you, I'm not lying. They are absolutely the same, uh, showing right here. And then there's the sound design, which is in true fashion, in true audio and pure fashion to add some sort of uh, audio sound design elements to their library. So very, very cool. Um, and mostly, actually, there's mostly pads here. Uh, and by the way, I have really, really good pads. I, I'll show you later what I mean. Um, so let's go uh, into their library. Let's start with the first one. We're going to start showcasing these instruments, which I really think they're really great. So, yeah, not bad. <laughs> Okay, so right away what I'm noticing uh, is the dynamic CC1. It is a little, 
uh, it, it's not really on point. I think it's because the the instrument itself already has a lot of expression built into the sample, and so like the CC is just really in sort of in the middle there, trying to figure out what to do and what not to do. Uh, anyway, so there is a uh, link button right here. Uh, this one links the two types of legato that they were talking about on the on the page there. So what that does is like it, it makes it so you can trigger the uh, rebowed legato with a slurred legato. And we get to decide up what velocity that happens, but also we can trigger it using uh, CC and you get to decide which value of CC you have to move your fader to or your uh, your mod wheel to trigger that type of legato. So I'm gonna keep it on velocity because I'm used to have the slur uh, on, on the velocity one, but I'm actually uh, going to make the slur legato, I'm gonna invert it, and I'm gonna say that the slur legato happens really, really earlier on. Because I want the I want the slur to happen when I hit low for, um, low velocities and not the other way around. Although I mean, Cremona Quarter it works uh, works like this, uh, which is probably for the for the purposes of comparing the two. I'm probably gonna leave it like that actually. Yeah, let's do maybe a little more. Let's do maybe yeah, that's fine. That handles it really, really well, I have to say. That's 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 amazing. That's really good. Okay, so we have a little bit of uh, options here. We are in the basic uh, in the basic window here, but I do I like to go into the advanced uh, with this interface right here because you get a lot more controls over your stuff. Um, the first thing we notice here that they give us the dynamic range, which is basically how far that CC1 is going to interact, which is great because I am going to pull that up a bunch. Uh, actually, I can I can use my fancy little wheel here on my touch screen if I really want to show that off. And the more I put that if I put that on 100%, this, the CC fader will become, um, it will go down to niente, it will go down to like zero volume. So as soon as I pull it up a little bit, there is some sort of noise artifacts there. So it doesn't really work great, but Okay, so I'm actually gonna pull this out to like about 95%. Yeah, this is a little more natural. Okay, okay. 
that sounds pretty good. So we got some mic positions. Let's look at some of the mic positions that they give us. So they give us a modern a mix and then a classic mix. A lot warmer, okay. Right away, there's not as much of brightness to it. Oh man, it handles it really, really well, I have to say, like the fast passages. Uh, yeah, very, very impressed by that, actually. All right, so let's go and look at the first. So this is Spot One microphone. Am I correct? Yes, it is. Then we have Spot Two. So the spot two seems to be a little brighter, or am I crazy? Yeah, it's definitely brighter. Okay, so we have the uh, Decca. The slur sounds like it's done in a very sort of twangy country way, <laughs> you know, like the, con the the country fiddle sort of uh, sort of slur. And I know that that's like where it's used mostly, but it has the very uh, sort of uh, rustic property to it. I, I actually quite like it. This is the uh, I believe it's the not the, the deca, and I think this is the tree overhead tree or something like that let me go and check by the way um on their website i or maybe they they have an explanation right here do they tell us what microphones they are we'll find out audio imperia uh i really do want to find out because i don't want to give you oh the outrigger that's what that is just came to my mind. It's the Outrigger microphones. Okay, so I noticed that when I don't actually trigger the legato, it gives like a very weird uh, lack of volume. Like it, it just like ducks the volume. Because I think it's what it does, it, it picks up from like the beginning of the sample, which is really quiet. And so, yeah. So it really wants you to, you know, with your finger to, to press two notes at the same time to really get that trigger done. Uh, so it's, it takes a little bit of um, dexterity with your fingers. And I don't have a lot of dexterity with my fingers, clearly. 
Um, all right, so those are the outriggers, and then we have the far. and Sierra there um hopefully they will not sue uh my face <laughs> off this planet uh okay so we got the far microphone so let's stick with the uh, modern uh mix for now the volume there a sec okay beautiful beautiful all right so that is the solo violin it comes with the legatos we looked at the legato and said look at the sustain Okay, so the vibrato is pretty accentuated. I wish I wish they included a control to tame that vibrato because this makes um, the blending because the, the vast majority of the the use that I'm gonna have through uh, um, the use that I'm gonna uh, okay English tonight not happening um <laughs> the 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 most use i'm going to make out of this library it's layering it with bigger libraries to make the sound more intimate and well that's basically the solo the way people mostly use solo libraries uh it's to is to really bring out the detail into a a big ensemble library and um that vibrato makes it really hard to integrate this sound with very quiet parts of the strings. Um, so, so for instance, if I wanted to do something like this, so first and foremost, they they did say that they only recorded one velocity layer, and this is just bringing the volume up and down. Uh, there is absolutely no. Uh, uh, you know, three or four velocity layers. There's, there's no crossfade between multiple um, velocity layers. And the reason they did that is to avoid artifacts in between crossfading when there's this type of legato. They gave a, they get a pretty basic explanation. I personally don't understand uh, how it works, so I'm not going to claim to know and I'm not going to tell you what it is. If you guys are interested, I think they have a video uh, on their website to, that explains why the process was that way. Um, so that makes things um, a little hard when it, it's come. It's time to use this library along with other libraries. I'll give you an example. So, if I am to um, create just the uh, Spitfire uh, symphonic strings here, um, let me because uh, I want to see. I'm I'm actually I am might be proven wrong here, but we'll. We'll see how it goes. So, for instance, if I pull up a violin first, maybe I'm 
just normal longs, right? Um, sure. Why not? Okay, so that's the symphonic uh, uh, symphonic strings. So if I'm going to layer them together, oh, sorry, this is not this is a long patch. It's not legato. I need a legato. What am I thinking? Um, let's do nostal G. Let's do performance legato. Uh, yeah, there it is. This might work. Or maybe a huge failure. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. Uh, also, I need to. I need to lower the volume of this. I like to work pretty quietly, um, just for mixing purposes. know what the I'm also an idiot because I'm on the long patch so all this was for nothing <laughs> we'll get we're getting there So right here, I'm all the way down with my uh, with my solo violin, and this still maybe let's put a 100 dynamic range there. Okay, you know what? I stand corrected. It does work pretty well. That's a beautiful melody I just came up with. <laughs> That's actually really nice. Um, yeah, let's use that for uh, for our piece tonight. Anyway, so it works very well. Um, I stand corrected. I think this is uh, not going to be a problem. Let's try it with uh, something a little more uh, in your face, like Sina Strings. Uh, let's do a violin. Truly got it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we're going to figure out if it works in every scenario. Because these two really are, are my most used string libraries, um, depending on the context. So let me make sure that this one is a very loud library.
I mean, it needs to be blended a little better. It needs to be cued. It needs to be panned properly. But I think uh, the basic idea is that it works really well. I can't really, uh, I can't really say otherwise. It really does work. Can't argue with the results. So very good then. Very good. Um, this makes me even more hopeful of the fact that I'm integrating this with uh, my VP template. Um, yeah, this is gonna be great. Fantastic. All right, so we have the legato. We looked at the sustain, which is already a step ahead of the Cremona Quartet, which does not give you a sustain patch. For whatever uh, godforsaken reason, um, their I, the, I, native instrument's idea of a, a sustain patch is an other legato patch. <laughs> You can't play multiple notes at the same time. So I don't think they understand what a sustain patch is supposed to do. Um, so, yeah, a little rant for you today. <laughs> so, and I'll, I'll show you later. In fact, I can I can show you right now if you want to know. Just because otherwise people think I'm crazy and I rant about stuff. I got a couple of uh, comments saying, like, you need to read the manual about the Opus one. And I was wrong. I said that I was wrong. So let's uh, let's see. So we have... Um, study by violin right here. If I go in here and I click sustain, <laughs> that's a sustain patch, according to Native Instrument. <laughs> you tell me. You can see I'm pressing more. Here, oh, I'll show you. You can see I'm pressing multiple notes at the same time. <laughs> It's a sustained portmento. Um, why is there portmento? No, I just want uh, regular, no, no, nothing. So basically, it's forcing. It's forcing types of legato, but can I d disable this? I don't think I can. Therefore, there is no sustain in this library. Yeah, this is not a sustain library by any stretch of imagination. I don't know why they did this. I'm pretty uh, unaware of uh, who was at the board meeting and decided that a sustain patch should not sound like a sustain patch. But hey, there's Quar Quartet Carmona. Uh, for you and I and I think that that has its use. We're we're gonna compare it later. Um, I don't want to spoil the fun here. <laughs> um. All right. So back into the uh, articulations, we got spiccato, which is always a welcome articulation for, especially for uh, solo libraries, which really you know bring up that really beautiful detail of a spiccato. <laughs> And as in true style of Audio Imperia, we have an incredibly uh, delayed sample start. I'm going to stretch it up a little bit. Spiccato, actually, I absolutely love it. Then we have Pizzicato, that's uh, that's spot on right there, that's nailed it. Do we have a Bartok? We do not have a Bartok, huh? That's okay, we can't have everything. We got a Tremolo, Polyphonic Tremolo. Okay, 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 okay. Um, yep, yeah, as good as it comes. And then we have our usual suspects, trill half tone and trill whole tones. Really nothing there. It's uh, very useful to have in certain scenarios. Okay, so that is the solo violin. Then we move into the 
uh, viola. Now, in the regular, in a, a libraries like Jaeger, you have an option on the first violins to make them sound like second violins. There is a, a little button down here that says second violins. Uh, I can even show you what I am talking about. So we have violins. Um, there it is, 16 violins, because they only give you one patch. So we're going to go into the legato. And in this library, you have this little button right here. If you go into advanced, you can click it, and this will become uh, it will become second violins. Okay, so it will it changes a little bit the panning, it changes a little bit like the EQ, but it will become a second violins. I wish they did the same thing with the solo library. Uh, however, it does not seem to have that option, which is a little bit unfortunate, but with a bit of clever panning around and a little bit of clever EQing, you can make this library sound like a second section. Uh, I think that's fair enough. You know, it will, it will push you to lear learn how to, you know, sound design a little bit, which is, you know, it's never a bad thing. So let's go and look at the viola. Um, very, very exciting. I absolutely love the viola as an instrument, as a real instrument I'm talking about. We also haven't looked at the reverb that the, this library comes with. Um, let's do, let's change the amount. We've got a hall. make it a little more substantial. Oh, I absolutely love the viola. They captured it really, really well, I have to say. Uh, let's compare it to... Uh, actually, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to compare it later. I'm going to compare it later uh, because we can actually write some MIDI and so we can have both libraries perform the same. Um, or, nah, that wouldn't work though. That wouldn't work. Lord. Never mind. Let's look really quickly at the um, Amati viola. Actually, let's take it back a step further because we didn't really do it with the violin. So let's compare it with the violin and then I'm going to pull up the Stradivari um, violin right here. So I'm going to pull up this track right here. I don't want to go all the way down all the time. Okay, so this is the solo violin that we just looked at. This is way too low here. We need to put it all the way up to 100. I think that's probably a good, a good spot. So this is the... Uh, solo library and then the Stradivari which has one step ahead of the uh, um, the solo from Audio Impera is the fact that you can actually control the vibrato with this and I can map this to um, or is it already mapped to something it's mapped to 14 right yeah but 14 my fitter 14 is somewhere else entirely so I'm going to remap this to my CC2 which is usually the vibrato that I that I choose Thinking about getting this on top of Nucleus, I think it would be an incredibly wise choice, uh, see Vince, because, in fact, this library is, I think they made it so to complement Nucleus. Um, so if there is a library that you would want to buy along with this one, it would be Nucleus. I think that would be a wise choice. Um, so already what I'm seeing is the Stradivari violin has a lot more expressivity, actually. However, the sound on the the mid sound of the Stradivari violin is very nasal. It's a little nasally, actually. Uh, now that I'm noticing, now that I'm comparing it against this.
this one is a little more warm. It's a little more, uh, ooh, I, okay, okay, I'm noticing things. The fact that I can I can take away that vibrato it's everything to me in a solo library though. Um, it is uh, it is a little bit more convincing when when you can actually regulate the vibrato instead of solo doesn't give you that option unfortunately darn it I wish they had a vibrato uh, CC for this one that would have made this library way way on top of the Cremona Quartet. Uh, what this event says, I agree. It feels more alive. It really does feel more alive. I have to agree with you. It, it, it feel more warm, a little more, um, less peculiar. Like the Stradivari violin feels a little more like niche in a little sense. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. Uh, this was the Cremona, the Stradivari, and this is the solo. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree with you. It, it feels a lot more alive. It feels a lot more, uh, really, really centered, um... But also what that means is that it needs a little more work when it comes down to mixing it into your full mix. It, you will have to like play the panning game and you have to really uh, EQ it properly because this tends to take the, the, the whole table for itself uh, because of that aliveness that we were talking about. I think I think that's very um, something to keep in mind when, when integrating this into a full mix. So... I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes, you know, when you want solo passages, you want that instrument to really take the table, uh, take the stage. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that is great. So let's go back on to the viola. Um, and um, I kind of like this head-to-head -head with the Cremona Quartet because, um, I mean, this, was, this is my solo library, my go-to solo library, uh, at least for strings. Uh, and it's been working really great. I just wish they had sustain patches. Native instrument, get your shit together. Sustain patches are when you can press more than two notes, or more than one note in this case, because you can't even press two notes. Please, update this. We need an update where you can pull in some samples and make like an actual... It's, it's probably a scripting thing. It's They either didn't record sustain patches... Which is my guess. They just didn't. They completely did. Uh, you know, ignore that. But like, we like this needs sustain patch. True sustain patches. Absolutely. I'm talking about Cremona Quartet. All four libraries. Because that would help. <laughs> I don't know how well. I, I I feel like that's one of those things where like, if sustains. Come on. Um. Could be the difference in price as well in this case. Well, yes. I mean, you, yeah. I mean, the Cremona Quartet is what, 400 bucks? Uh, something like that. Uh, I can go and look it up. I don't want to be wrong about this. I don't want to misrepresent Native Instrument here because, I mean, the Cremona Quartet, it is one of my favorite libraries. Um, but, oh man. Sustain patches. Sustain patches are when you can press more than one note at a time. It, it's, it is, it's, I mean, it's brainless to me. And then when I opened this library for the first time and I saw that you can do chords with this library, that's just, that's, nah, nah, dude. You, you can't, you can't do that to people. And that really brought down the value of it to me. Um, so, uh, and, and I bet they can fix this with an update. I bet it's fixable with an update. Okay, so yeah, there it is. So, Cremona Quartet is currently at $400, okay? Cur currently at $400. What you're getting is four instruments, okay? Four instruments. You do not get a sustain patches. You can't do chords with the Cremona Quartet. You only get four strings, okay? 
granted, they're Stradivari violins and and Amati violas and and uh, what's the other one? It's the um, the other beautiful, beautiful Guarneri violin. Okay, so you're you're getting some prime, um, some prime samples. Nothing denies that. But holy crap, the fact that you can't don't have a sustain that just bothers me for some reason so, so much. Um, and um, now audio in Paris. What the heck? Uh, now. Audio Imperia, however, you get for $300. So it's $100 less. You get a very, very compelling strings plus a lot of other libraries around it, which we're going to look at in a second. Um, but it's $300. What this library doesn't have, it's vibrato control. Ah, I just want a library that does it all. Come on, come on. If we merge the two... <laughs> together we can uh, we can have like a really good library oh my goodness this has very good vibrato control the way it cross fades between vibrato and non vibrato is actually really convincing really convincing but it oh man that is that is as convincing as it comes it's a great vibrato it's a great vibrato control why do I not have this in the solo library. Is it hidden somewhere? Am I not seeing it? This is a reverb. Dynamic, sample start, legato smoothness, velocity, transpose range, polyphonic legato, envelope. No, I, it, it's not here. That's, uh, as far as I can see, I don't see it anywhere. Is it in the back or something? What is going on here? They don't even let you go inside the, the instrument. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's new. Okay, well, I mean, okay, uh, don't think so. I don't really num remember it in most audio impure. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I think they just don't have it. And I, and I get it. They're trying to build something that has like this innate expression into it. Uh, you know, the starting the note and then like the violinist does the vibrato thing, you know, it's like one of those like old East West uh, sus exp patches, you know what I mean? Like the ones with like the, the sustain and legato expressivo patches that they used to have in the play uh, in the play engine. Um, I get it. OK, I get I get the point of it. But like, oh. Oh, just something about it just like fuels the fire inside of me. You know, <laughs> I just I just need this to have all the things that I want. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's look at the um, Amati Viola right here and compare it with the solo viola in solo. Uh, let's do this. This is a, an absolute pain in the ass, though. Okay, so that was the solo. Let's look at the uh, Amati Viola. The Amati Viola sounds glorious, I have to say. Uh, this one also sounds really good. Wow, the, the scripting of Fast Legato underneath the hood of this thing is insane. I mean, I bet and no player is able to play this. Uh, tough call on this one. They both sound good. Yeah, it is. It is really a tough call on this one. Um, I mean, it is. There are two different violas. You can hear the difference between the two, but they sound really, really good. Both of them. Wow. 
Sounds pretty, pretty convincing. Um, of course, we get the usual suspect here with a sustained patch. Thank you, Audio Imperia. That is a sustained patch, native instrument. This one. I want to have uh, six viola players and samples. That's what I want to have. And uh, native instrument, you need to make that happen with the with the chromona quartet. It just needs to happen. Okay, so that is a sustained patch. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm, uh, enough of this. I promise. I'm just going to keep going. Spiccato. Let's see. Hold on. Sample start. Beautiful sound. This is usable in basically every genre. <laughs> you can do pop music, you can do rock with this, you can do orchestral, epic, trailer, you name it. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful spiccato. Sample start. Let's put it a little forward. See, the sample start, the more I do the sample start, the more I can do fast things. Very nice. Very, very beautiful. Also, they're, they're, the way they script the sample start, it still makes it sound so natural. Even when you like literally chopping the entire front of a sample. I mean, it's great. Sounds, sounds amazing. That's hands down. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, in terms of the Amati Viola, we do have a... a um... Okay, that's more of a staccato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do the staccatissimo. That's the equivalent. Ooh, this is... Oh, man, this sounds a lot more realistic, I have to be honest. It's the noises, is the it's the screams of the of the strings that makes it, that sells this for me. Can you hear the scratchiness? That that is that is oh that is so satisfying. Also, this is a lot louder than the other. Let's level match these two bad boys. Awesome. Let's play them together. Oh, oh, oh this is so satisfying. <laughs> that is so satisfying. Okay, okay, so that's good. We got a spiccato here. the way the wood resonates on this violin it's a it's completely different from the other one um and it's a little flatter you can hear it it might just be microphones that they used 
Uh, but I kind of want to believe that it's the wood, you know. We're talking about Stradivari against whatever this was. I don't know what brand of viola this was. I'm pretty sure it was a pretty good viola. It also might be just the interior EQ, the way they sampled it, the, the machine they processed it process the audio in through what notes am I playing you hear that the vibration of the string there that distortion ah those, those are the, the devil it's in the details those are the details that I absolutely adore about these libraries and because there are short notes you can sample short notes way easier than you can sample long notes of course this is a known fact in sampling um and and we got so good at sampling short notes that we can really capture the soul of of a short note that tack that percussive element there the string hitting the the threadboard Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a sucker for these things. Solo somehow gives more of that epic feel, and Cremona seems more intimate, but they both sound very real. I agree with that 100%. I agree with that 100%. It's fuller, it's, uh, it's more pompous. as it comes tremolo i mean usual suspects here you get all those uh nice playing by the way because <laughs> thanks man i <laughs> appreciate it uh all right let's move on to the solo cello this gotta be good oh i need to mm, mm, mm. you know what i'm about to do what's up brack are you Bra is that brack am i pronouncing you brackish is that right Welcome, welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> so you know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to compare it with uh, Tina Guo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm doing it. You can't stop me. Don't stop me. Whatever, I'm just going to... I don't care about the name of this track. I care for the samples. Come here. Come here, you. There it is. Let's see. Showdown, boys. And gals, showdown. Ah, it's gonna be good. All right, so let's hear the uh, my one go-to cello library without a shadow of a doubt. Are you talking about the Tina Guo? Because if it is, yeah, I concur. <laughs> they did an amazing job. All right, let's hear. Uh, yeah, yeah, same, dude, same. Um, let's hear the solo first. Audio Imperia solo. <laughs> They're also. I know that's kind of a weird name. Woo! No, that was not it. There it is. Let me correct this bad boy right here. Mm, too high. <laughs> also. Okay, I don't understand this thing, okay? Why do companies sample cello that can only get to C? What is this, C2? Cellos can go way higher than that. I don't understand. You can you you can do a way higher note than that on a cello. I don't understand the, the need to limit it on the C right here. Am I wrong? Am I crazy? I feel like you can go higher than that. Let's see the... Uh, Stradivari here. What's the range of this? Because I have a feeling. I have a feeling. I got a feeling. Oh, I almost thought I crashed this thing. Okay, so let's hear. Yeah, see, the Cremona chord did it right. Yes, you can. Look at that. 
So according to Cremona, the highest note you can achieve on a cello is a B flat or A sharp, depending on how you see it. Right here. That to me, it's a cello range from C. So it's one, two, three, almost four octaves. So that makes sense to me because the cello does almost four octaves. Um, why, oh, why do we stop the cello at the third octave? That just uh, defeats the whole purpose to me, to be honest. All right, so let's go back on to the cello here. I was ranting for no reason. happening with the script audio imperia a little choppy but the scripting works i gotta be honest it does all right now let's try to do that with the stradivari cello what a mess. That's a mess. <laughs> okay, so of course this is not made to really do that, so the scripting doesn't hold that. Oh, that's a beautiful slur right there. I mean, this is very much for one purpose, you know? I like that a lot. I, I do, I do like that a lot. Uh, what I want to do is slow passages with the solo real quick. Oops. So the slur is almost in existence on, on the solo, which is a shame. Yeah, there, there's no slur there. Um, I feel like they could have recorded on the on the C string, the slide down. Come on, they recorded it on these two C's. That that is sounds slightly lazy to me. I gotta be honest. It, it's a little laziness there. I I perceive. Why, why there's no slur between the, the first C and the second C, but there is right there. And there is right there, too. I mean, that is, too, that is a, eh. That's a missed opportunity to me. All right, now, Tina Guo, of course, at Tina Guo, you can't really do quick things with it. Okay, I am, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Play the Tina Guo and the solo together. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> never underestimate. <laughs> never underestimate Tina Guo. No, never, never, dude. beautiful beautiful okay so we have that <laughs> uh of course we also have other patches native instrument sustain patch learn 
That is what four cellos sound together. Okay, that's a sustained patch. Beautiful. The, mm, the freaking vibrato. How cool would it be if we could control the vibrato on that? Ugh. Okay, samples. Ooh, the bass, the sub. Ooh. Just felt it. I can't even, I don't even know the notes. <laughs> is <laughs> it works pretty well so we got the pizzicato it's got some nice bite to it it really does it really does have some nice bite to it i gotta agree ah the notes cello like it was a piano <laughs> works let me see the the Cremona Quartet when it comes down to um, what we got here. Still very impressed with the sheer amount of, for now, 199 for solo, and you have not gotten into the brass yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> just, just you wait until I get into the woodwinds. The brass is good, but the woodwinds is going to blow you away. Just you wait. Oh, baby. We haven't even scratched the surface here. And yes. Even even three hundred dollars, honestly, this is a bargain. Just saying, hey, Audio Pierre, take this as you will. It's a bargain. Cremona Quartet is four hundred dollars. <laughs> take take that as you will. <laughs> anyway, I know a lot of people are gonna hate me after this because they're like, "Oh, they they raised the price because of you." Like, sorry. I'm just, you know, just saying. <laughs> Staccatissimo here on the Cremona Quartet. So it's, it's got no bass, nothing. But it's got bite. That's cool. That is pretty cool. Cremona Quartet. You get the point there for sure. Although this doesn't doesn't. Uh, I mean, this is more a spiccato. It's not. It doesn't have the bite of a staccatissimo. Staccatissimo is more like. Brr. Spiccato is more like. Beep. You know, like it's very delicate, sort of brush up <laughs> with the bow.
Mm. Yes, it has more bass, but like you're gonna EQ that bass out anyway, because you know this is gonna clash with your contra basses. It's gonna clash with your lower synths. It's gonna clash with your low brass. It's gonna this is gonna be a mud. So you're gonna you're gonna shave it off anyway. So I feel like in for all intents and purposes, this from uh, Stradivari Cello, it's the Staccatissimo patch I'm gonna use uh, for for all the stuff Staccatissimo. <laughs> It's the bite! Woo! So good! Woo. It's angry. I like it. Uh, Alright. Trumpets. Let's get into the trumpets. Um, and I'm going to compare it with the solo trumpet from uh, Cinebrass because it's a beautiful beautiful solo trumpet in Cinebrass right here yes baby change the patch for me um all right so we got the solo trumpet from solo King uh, retongued. Uh, get here. Get over here. We want a fingered legato on a on a brass instrument. Give me some Battlefield 1940. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't want to get copyright stricken, though. <laughs> I'd love to. So we have a uh, G, uh, G flat as lowest note. Give me some. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? And then as I note, we have. Oh, we have a C. We're getting there. We're, we're getting into the clarinets. All done. <laughs> all done. Uh, all right. So that's the solo. Now we get... Can I play Gershwin? Can I play the, the, the clarinet part of Gershwin without getting copyright stricken? How long ago was it made? Has it been 100 years? Surely, right? Let me know in the... Let me know in chat. How, how long ago was Gershwin done so I can play that theme? <laughs> oh, man. Um, let's see here. We got, okay, so this is Cine Brass right here. There's a rumble underneath that recording, and that is so not okay. Cine samples, so not okay. Um... What is this? No, 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 dude. 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 I'm blind. That's what I am. Look at that rumble. Look at that. No bueno. No bueno, in the samples. No bueno. Cut that out. There you go. Oh, we're getting into the cornet area here. I can I can get there by legato. But if I try to re-trigger those notes, it's it's not happening. 
Ooh! That's a that's good range right there. Holy crap. <sighs> this possible with a solo. Let's see. The highest note you are able to do with a solo is a C, right here. And also the property of the way this has been played, I feel like it's been played in a um, more like a mournful way. Right? Does it sound sort of sad to you? Because it, it for sure sounds sad to me, which is fine. I mean, it's a beautiful color. The one from Cine Brass is it sounds a lot more military, a lot more Americana sort of uh, sort of feel to it. Ooh, that you know what just gave me vibes of? That just gave me crazy like 1930s mafia vibes Ooh, I was about to play it I was about to play it <laughs> oh the godfather's theme I was about to play it um Okay, so, I mean, two very different sounds here, uh, two very different colors. I really, really like both of them for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're right. It could work in a really sad World War II stuff. Yeah, possibly, yeah, um, most definitely. Uh, let's see, okay, so let's move on. Uh, for the brass, we have very limited uh, articulations. We have the sustains, native instrument. <laughs> it's going to be the running joke now. Every time there's a sustain patch, like native instrument, you're on notice. It's a beautiful color, I gotta be honest. And then we, ha we have a staccatissimo. Sounds pretty good. All right, so let's move on to the French horn, which I think it's the one of the best ones um, sampled so far in terms of uh, actual singular French horn. And then we're gonna um, measure it up against one of my absolute favorites so far, uh, meaning before solo came around. Um, but remember, Cine Brass, it's kind of a, an unfair comparison because Cine Brass was recorded in one of the most beautiful studios for brass, uh, which I believe it's the Sony stage. And it's uh, so, so flattering to brass. It's so good the way it resonates with brass libraries and um, with brass instruments. So this is the uh, solo one, Audio Imperium. Mm. Always get that freaking retonged right there. Has this very warm 
property to it, which I really appreciate. Very good. And then we have the Cinebrass. So this one sounds like John Williams. It really does. It sounds like one of John Williams' horns. It has that beautiful color to it. This was the Cinebrass one, and I, I, I have to say I do prefer it for most applications, but the solo one is actually not bad at all. You can hear the room. You, on these ones, you can really hear the room. Same thing, we have the sustain. As good as it gets, and the staccatissimo. The cuivre at the end of it actually works really well. That's very real. That's very realistic of a if you guys have ever been next to a horn player that it's belting out a staccato note or even just like a sustained one that the the quiver eights. Very good, well done on Imperia. That is exactly what a French horn sounds like up close. Yeah, that's pretty good. I have to say that's pretty good. Uh, and now the coolest thing about this is that they give you a descon horn, or as the French would say, I think it's the chant, something like that. I think it's the chant, the chant horn. Um, now this is cool. It's basically a horn, but it, of course the range is a little higher. Uh, I'm sure you guys know what a descon horn is, but. Beautiful. Really, really, really pretty. Uh, I don't have this kind of horn from Cinebrass. I am going to have to buy it at some point. But since I have this one, I don't see any reason now to buy a this kind of horn um, upgrade to the Cinebrass. I genuinely don't see a point. This is a beautiful this kind of horn. It works really, really well. Uh, yes, very mellow tone, this one. Uh, to the more epic and, and again, on soul. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the woodwinds, which I think is literally the piece of resistance of uh, of solo from Audio Imperia. It's beautiful the way they sampled the the flutes, and I'm gonna compare that up against uh, pretty good woodwinds. Not the best on the market, but pretty good. Uh, let's do a flute solo from Symphonic Spitfire Symphonic or uh, woodwinds. So let's see how the solo works. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Very good. Absolutely beautiful. And yeah, 
It is. It is very, very amazing. <laughs> I have to agree with you. And this is, uh, of course, this is Spitfire. There is room. Of course, there's a lot more room to this uh, Air Studio. So it's going to sound automatically good <laughs> in terms of actual textural sound. But the way it's coded, that's what I'm, I'm comparing. The way it's scripted. They're both very good. They're both very good. Um, this one is really sampled well, I have to say. We have a C as highest note, and we have, of course, a C as lowest note. Uh, we have some sustains. Standard. We've got a staccatissimo. Works really well. And then we got the trills. I mean, do I even have to? Um, yeah, very, very, very good. The staccato short patches in Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds or Spitfire Symphonic anything are awful. <laughs> I don't know how else I have to put it. Like, the staccato and staccatissimo and spiccato patches in uh, Spitfire Symphonic strings and woodwinds and brass are for the most part, com like, not even, like, bad, like, unusable, especially in the strings. Uh, but the short patches on um, woodwinds are f okay. But I'm not even going to bother pulling those up because I, mean, I can if you guys want, but, um, like, the spiccatos in the strings, in the uh, Spitfire Symphonic Strings, I don't have it in my template. I literally don't have it in my template because they're terrible. Every time I have to do spiccatos, I, I either do Albion or I do Jaeger uh, or I do uh, Cine Strings because they're that bad. They're just terrible. The volumes are inconsistent. The way they edited it in the background um, with velocity, volume, reaction, it's, yeah. I don't know what they were drinking something when they did that, when they were editing the samples. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I can pull it up if you guys want, but... Anyway, so we got the... Ooh, clarinet. That's my favorite one. As you probably guessed <laughs> by now. Uh, where is it? Clarinet solo right here. Let's pair it up against that guy. All right, so this is solo. Let me... <laughs> Let me change this. I'm going to do it. If I get copyright stricken, I don't even care. At this point, let's do good. I don't even know the notes, but I'm going to try it anyway. That's beautiful. Legato, it's a little sloppy, I have to be honest, but the sound is glorious. Um, when it comes down to the Spitfire, it's like an uplifting sadness in the tone. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of describing it. Spitfire nailed it. That's a good one. Uh, clarinet, it's playable, scripted well, sounds amazing because 
Air Studio. So, yeah. This one, it's good. It's more up close. It's a little more sad. It's, it's, it's more intimate. I like it. almost the the noise of him clanking on the on the buttons which is really really nice i like that i like that a lot i like that a lot well done Audio imperia on this one oboe now the oboe it's good i think i remember it was really really good um I'm comparing it to Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds which is like really really good library like it's not like orchestral tools Berlin Woodwinds, but it's definitely up there. This is solo, by the way. I swear to you, one day, I'll make a patch that has 104 set up by default. <laughs> That's an oboe. Okay, very convincing. The legato scripting clashes with the CC1. This is the type of stuff that um, this is the type of stuff that I don't understand from Switchfire. They can make the most amazing libraries in the world, and then they come up with like there's like they have these like little tiny weird scripting issues and editing issues that just ah it's, they sent me berserk because like it this is clearly superior in terms of sound in terms of of legato quality but the editing is awful like it's like these dip in volume every time you every time you move cc1 it just messes it up ah, man they happen once in a while and when they happen it's just come on man And don't get me wrong, this has it too a little bit. See? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful library. Well done, Audio Imperia. Now let's move on to one of my absolute favorite instruments, which is the... English horn or cor anglais, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a beautiful instrument. Very, very melancholic, very uh, sad in its nature, and that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful tone. I was, uh, every time, I forget every time. Forget every time. That's a splendid instrument. Really, really beautiful. Let's see the uh, Spitfire one.
I mean, both are incredible. And Solo is really, really nailing some of the details uh, of these instruments. The way it handles fast passages, that's really cool. I, I really do like the way they script fast passages. Let's go on to bassoons. And I'm not even bothering with the other articulation guys because, you know, pretty much self-explanatory. Most of the people are going to buy these libraries for the legato um, anyway. So now the bassoon solo in the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds, it's really good. So we got we got our work cut out for us here, Audio Imperia. Let's see. And I forgot again. This has gotta this has gotta change. There's no like playability if I wanna do a little bit of staccato with it. Um, which is kind of sad. Ah man, I wish they, they put some little more a little more work in it, but hey. It's 200 bucks, 300 bucks, so. Ooh, that's a beautiful tone. When you pair this with a horn, bassoons and horn are made to be together. It's just, it's the doubling, the most beautiful doubling you can do to an instrument. In fact, look, put some horns right here. Oh man, it's 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 a beautiful couple, especially in an orchestra when you want to double a beautiful horn um, passage. You double it with uh, horn and bassoons. When you're playing horns, you you want the bassoons to double it. It just makes it better. Every just everything is better with the bassoon. <laughs> That's essentially what I'm trying to say. Yeah, very good, very, very good, comrade, very good. <laughs> All right, so Spitfire Woodwinds bassoon, it's something else. I really like this one. Oh, dynamic crossfade, it's amazing. I feel like I feel like a conductor, like really quieted down. It just it, it works. What a beautiful instrument. What an absolute beautiful instrument the bassoon is. It's an incredible sound. Um, so, and by the way, I'm not doing this like make who, who wins between the two. I'm just showcasing what's, what's you know, other alternatives and the ones that I have. But, and again, this is incredibly, incredibly uh, well sampled. Yeah, that, that is as convincing as it comes in, in my book. All right, now, the other side of this library is two different vocalists, uh, singers, that are giving us uh, incredible, incredible vocal chops here. Uh, one is a more, it's a soprano, more angelic voice, and they, they sort of market it as like this uh, angelic, uh, ethereal sort of, uh, sort of um, voice. And for this, I feel like we need to put a little more reverb on this because, you know, we want the reverb. Give me the reverb. A 
again, Audio Imperia comes through with uh, the fast legato scripting is its own point. First off, beautiful voice. The singer is incredible. Absolutely phenomenal voice. So that was an ah. Now we got, uh, I think this is supposed to be an all oh or ooh. Ooh. Very mournful. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Okay, so that was the angelic. And then we have the uh, operatic voice. And by the way, we have the sustained patches of all that. So if you want to create a little chorale uh, with that, you can. You can. It allows you to do it. Um, so this is the operatic, more vibrato sort of focused voice. Very good. And then the ooh. Let's uh, let's give him a little bit of respect with some reverb here. See what do we have here? I was tuning in here to figure out if solo was going to be an addition for me as a sheer hobbyist, but I am pretty convinced this is truly a great library for the cost already in advance. Thanks, Lorenzo, for this great session. Absolutely, man. Thank you for stopping by in my stream. I I I am honored to have you guys. I don't care if you're a hobbyist or a profession. Is that that's that's very irrelevant to me. Uh, I think what's beautiful is that music sort of unites everyone in different interests, you know. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by, man. Um, I hope this was something that, you know, gave you a better idea of if you're going to pull the trigger on this library or not. My suggestion is do it. It's cheap. Um for the for what you're getting uh, for the value and uh no I, I think i think it's it's a great library you should definitely move forward anyway thanks man thanks for stopping by you know you and uh my my streaming schedule it's all over the place because like projects and stuff uh, but make sure you visit my YouTube channel i post like videos on there too uh if you you know for anything and feel free to chat with me um anything you want to know you know i'm open to suggestions <laughs> that's what i do I just, this is this is fun for me I, I really enjoy this anyway man yeah the voices are awesome this thing is really beautiful thank you man i appreciate it i appreciate you subscribing um, and, and by the way, I can, you know what I can do? I, uh, just because we're here, um, I'll link it into the description. So if you, if you guys want, it's right there. Um, where are you? There it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. I am trying to grow that channel a little bit. Yeah. Go on that. And, uh, that's the. Uh, that's my YouTube channel. I got a bunch of videos already on up. Most of them are uh, these kinds of formats of live streams that I then re-uploaded onto my YouTube. There's some, there's different kind of stuff in there anyway. Um, yeah, so that was first look at uh, Solo. I'm just going to try to make some, uh, some music now with this. Just, you know, for a remaining bit of time. Uh, let's see what we can come up with. And I, my goal is to actually use just this library. 
and nothing else. And I know this is sort of like counterproductive because most people are going to use this in conjunction to other libraries, but whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I think there's enough here, enough material to make some cool little piece of music here. Uh, where do we start? Where do we start with uh, what do we have here? Um, let me load up some guide. Um, Got a nice felt noir. Hmm. something uh you know for a smaller band so something a little more intimate um a little poppy not in meaning like genre pop but a little like it's uh like happy uh sort of mysterious but happy but not <laughs> and I'm, i am making zero sense i know i know uh bear with me all right so let's see here we got um, let's start with maybe a, a little bit of a, um, actually, I'm going to go into the, sing oh, we haven't even touched the pads. Oh, we got, let me shoot a question your way then. Best piano library. Oh, oh, <laughs> huh. well, in my opinion, the most expressive and, and uh, usable in in commercial settings that I've used in commercial settings for either for film scores or for um, whatever medium, documentaries, especially documentaries. I've, I've used piano and documentaries a ton. The one that I keep going back to is uh, Omnisphere uh, Keyscape. Uh, and Noir is the second one that I use most often. Um, but ev if you ask this question to every composer, every composer will give you a different answer. <laughs> if, if you try to poll, if you start a poll on, on one of those Facebook groups, um, for composers, you know, whether it is, you know, virtual instrument, I, you know, you, you find a variety of answers. Most of the times the most answered libraries are going to be grandeur, which is from Native Instrument. Uh, where is it? This one, Grandeur. They're going to say Una Corda. They're going to say Alicia Keys. They're going to say Noir. And they're going to say Omnisphere Keyscape. The C7, the Yamaha C7 that they have in Keyscape is... And the way you can tweak it, the way you can uh, mangle it, and, and really is uh, is incredible. Um but if you re if you're a pianist and and you really want that raw piano sound that it's like really really piano, uh, I'd suggest you go with Piano Tech. Uh, I believe now there are seven or eight like one of those. Piano Tech is gonna give you it's a it's sample modeling, so it's gonna give you a very very realistic response, uh, and more than response, I would say uh, it's gonna give you a very realistic. Um, behavior of the piano because the sample modeling of course ac accounts for the wood type accounts for the string vibration for the resonance inside the the acoustic um chamber of the piano it's gonna um so that it really depends can you make piano tech sound for cinematic purposes yeah absolutely 100 percent. you can tweak the softness the harshness of the hammer uh you can you can do a lot of things with piano tech. In fact, I, I, I should probably buy that library at some point because it's a, it's a beautiful library. Um, but if you are, you know, wanting to get something that gives you more instruments in general, I mean, piano tech comes with a bunch of instruments. Uh, I sort of felt like with, uh, with Oliver Arnold's sound, but in much less flexible. I do like Oliver Arnold's uh, toolkit. I have the toolkit and the piano is great. 
the piano is really really good i i like that i like that sound i but that's a very unique and very niche sound that only fits in specific scenarios and you can only use it in specific scenarios you know if you want like a brighter sound you you're not going to get that brighter sound um like you said it's much less flexible exactly so um i mean so yeah my pick if if you were like starting out and you're like what library should i get well if you are getting uh if you're investing in complete ultimate which most composers probably should whether you're a hobbyist or you're you want to do this as a career investing in contact and uh, as uh, you know in complete ultimate it's probably a good idea although it's a lot of money and i get it but um it comes with five pianos now because the new version has five piano isn't it or six actually it comes with new like the newest one comes with noir comes with alicia keys comes with the giant comes with una corda so one two three four five six seven never mind <laughs> it comes with seven pianos and these are great all of these so the maverick the grandeur and the gentleman are awesome the gentleman sounds really nice if you tweak it really well it sounds really nice i mean these are viable piano i mean daniel i know daniel james uses the gentleman every every time um he really likes it and i can't blame him because it's it's freaking amazing it sounds beautiful uh i have been doubting that myself contact full uh very tough call but i'm simply on a budget as an hobbyist no i i get it dude i absolutely get it i i think it, it you, you gotta wage your um your expenses i mean if you don't make any money out of music yeah, it's it's not really a justified expense. Um, I'm totally like one hundred percent. But you know, consider what you're getting for the price. And again, I have um, I I bought the collector's edition, the complete ultimate, because I had it as an upgrade. I didn't buy it outright because that was way too expensive. But uh, I already I was I owned the complete ultimate ten, and then I upgraded to eleven, and then. When 12 Ultimate Edition came out, uh, 12 uh, Collector's Edition, pardon me, came out, then I upgraded to that, which was a pretty penny, uh, to upgrade from Ultimate to Collector's Edition. And then I upgraded to 13 Collector's Edition, um, which gave me the Cremona Quartet and gave me uh, Arcus, which is great, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> and it gave me Farlight, uh, and Stray Light it gave me Mallet Flux and Cloud Supply, which are really, really, really good libraries. Uh, it gave me Mysteria and Arcus. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it was it worth it? Yeah, I think so. I think it was worth it, the price tag. But again, if you were to buy it outright, it, it's a pretty penny. It's like $1,500, $1,600 or something like that. The Arcus I have as well as... As well, it's amazing. I haven't seen a library like that before. It's a great library. I mean, it's the same people from uh, Orchestral Tools that made it. It's, uh, I mean, anything those guys touch is bound to be good. <laughs> it's just, they they really got it down. Um, yeah, considering Contact. Well, I mean, Contact is um, sort of a must-have these days. Uh, and I'm I'm assuming you're on the contact player, the free version, right? Am I am I assuming wrong? Because that I mean, there's only so much, so many libraries you can. Yeah, there's only so many libraries you can enjoy on that one, which is I mean, it's fine, perfectly fine. There's ton actually. There no, never mind. There's tons of libraries that work in the free free player, um, but only the ones that have this interface right here. You know, only the ones that come with like you don't. You can't have these ones, <laughs> the ones in the background, you know, the ones that run in the back, which is which is fine, you know, and and um, and, and you know these are more like third party, you know, other people, and they don't really come with the native access, and which I mean, fine. Um, and again, I I think going back to like what what library is best, I. I this is the thing that I always argue on 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 uh, on the forums is um, there really isn't best of anything. 
in the world of sampling because what a lot of people don't take in consideration is the fact that every library is made for a specific purpose. And a lot of people miss the fact that, um, and by a lot of people, I mean like at least some people that I see, you know, buzzing around the, the forum saying like, oh, Spitfire is for everything and it's great and, you know, hail, oh, hail Spitfire and then whole hail burling strings or orchestral tools and oh, hail this and oh, hail that. I mean, I've named two because they're giants of the market, but the point applies to everything. You know, people are going to have opinions on which library is best for something, but at the end of the day, I always tell this to people, uh, even the people that are starting out, you're going to end up buying them all. That's just the truth. You're going to buy them all because you are going to buy them all. You have to buy them all. If you're taking this job serious, I mean, for, for hobbyists, that's fine. You know, like they just buy whatever they want and all they play around with it. It's just, it's just a joyful moment that they get to compose their music with it, which is great, which is phenomenal. I wish I could, that, that is literally the essence of music writing. It's like the enjoying just the process of composing. But for people that, that make money out of this job, you're going to have to own them. Like at least most of them. So why even wasting your time thinking about which one should I buy for? Buy the one that you like. Buy the one that you need in that moment. That's which. That's the one. That's the answer. The, the the answer to that. Which library should I buy? Which piano should I buy? Which piano do you want to buy? They're all of them are good. <laughs> all of them are going to give you a color on your palette. All of them are going to give you something different. If you buy the Alicia Keys, you know that you can't get that warm sound. But Alicia Keys, it's a piano that it's made for a purpose. And will the Alicia Keys piano sound good for most things? Yeah. It's the simplest piano library you can ever buy, but it's it works. It's a beautifully sampled sample, sample library, and it works. But you you can't you know you can't make the sound warmer and or or harsher. You know it's very simple. You have some basic settings, some basic controls here. You can control you know the keys and um, and and the I mean there are some some very very basic controls here. But again. A lot of people don't don't take in consideration these kinds of things, like the Maverick. The Maverick, it's I personally don't like the Maverick as much because it's roomy and it's a little uh, muddy, muddled, but it works fine. has a very uh, old, very small tail piano sound, which is very appropriate for some things. And as soon as you start mangling with the softness of that, and you bring it to a more cinematic situation, So can you do, I mean, these are all different colors. And, and that's why, you know, I, I, it is, it really is versatile. It, and see, you pull up the, the harshness. So. I mean. And that's that's really the, the the substance of what I'm trying to say is this: every library will give you a portion of what you need, the depending on what you need. So 
if in that specific moment in your life, you're like, you know, I want to compose something more epic, more fantasy epic driven, more, you know, blockbuster two steps from hell sort of thing. And, and you're like, okay, what, what string library should I buy? Any, any library will give you that sound. M granted, any uh, sort of um, ensemble libraries will give you that sound. Of course, solo, it's not going <laughs> to, it's going to be the library for you, but nucleus is going to give you that sound. No problem. Um, uh, Philatus is going to give you that sound. Uh, Philatus is going to give you that sound. Spitfire Symphonic Strings is going to give you that sound. For God's sake, buy something that can do staccatos with that because the freaking staccatos and staccatos in it's terrible. Uh, so maybe, maybe let's rephrase it. You, you can you can get uh, Spitfire Studio Strings. Well, it's going to give you that sound. Uh, Albion One, absolutely, it's going to give you that sound. In fact, I think the first orchestral library that people should buy, it's probably Albion One because it has all the sounds that you're going to need for that specific genre. And you can repurpose most of those sounds for other genres as well. If you know, do, if you know, do a little more like a intimate sort of stuff, you can do that with, with Albion very easily. Uh, you're going to have to tweak it a little bit. You're going to have to like watch your orchestration chops, but you can achieve that. Um, so yeah, I mean, the question of like, which library is best now, which piano library is best. I just showed you two of the cheapest libraries and, you know, you can do a bunch and, and you have reverb, <laughs> reverb fixes everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's great. I skipped it because, uh, I wanted to go into more experimental stuff. So I got Albion five. Uh, yeah. I mean, Tundra is uh, at the top of my list. It's right here. I use this all the time on, on film scores, and I use that all the time on documentaries. Uh, it's great. In fact, the two albums that I own are 1 and 5, because 1 and 5 are really like the two extremes. And it is. It is a great vibe. It really gives you that uh, incredible vibe that you're looking for. And I think I, I love that for that reason. So, I mean, I mean I, I, this is a very long answer. <laughs> To like which piano you should buy, dude. I, I'm still, tr I'm still, I would still advise you to buy uh, if you, if you have Omnisphere. I don't know if you have Omnisphere, um, but if you do, then go Keyscape hands down. You can use, uh, well, you, you can use Keyscape without Omnisphere. I think uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain that you can. So if you can go that route, go that route. Otherwise, uh, Noir, it's going to be a great library for you. Um, noir uh, being the one that I had loaded earlier. Um, and you get two, you get the pure one, which is no felt, and then you get the felt one. Um, it, it is a beautiful library. The interface is glorious. Um, emotional Piano, I don't have that one, but I hear very good things about it. Again, any library is going to give you... Uh, any library that has the the, 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 the you know softener or harshness sort of control, it's going to give you something that you can use in most scenario. Uh, I do like noir a ton, actually. Am I playing this? <laughs> oh yeah, I was. Wow, I didn't even think about that. And you can do like, uh, you can do a lot of things with this with this library. So you got a little harsher tone right there. little Skyrim, you know, sort of vibe. And and again, you toss a reverb on things and you and you instantly have a beautiful mood.
Now, the cool thing about Noir that I want to point out, I know this has turned out to be a Noir review here, um, but the, the reason why you should buy Noir is, is for this. It's got a bunch of cool little effects, and there is this particle engine, which it's going to blow your mind in a second. If you haven't heard this before, I'm sure you heard it before, but maybe you didn't. This is, this is everything. And you can tweak this too. You can choose uh, what sounds you're gonna do. I like the, I like the mallets. And you could do like, like that. You can choose the type of noises. Yes, it's very close to the idea of uh, Stratus, yeah. And you can play with this. Choose the density. So many options, so many tweak, uh, tweak stuff that you can do to it. It's a great library, dude. Instant vibe. You can put strings underneath that. You can put a horn underneath that. It's a usual chord progression for a nice epic track. And, and you get yourself, in fact, you know, you can even use one of those, like, operatic voices underneath that, you know, uh, like, something like that. Where's my, sorry, where's my metronome? Um, like, I'm just making myself a, a little um, foundation here. And I'm going to loop this so I have like a little bit of a, a situation. Now, this, I, I'm, I'm finding a way to make it about uh, <laughs> Audio Imperial Solo. Just to show you the, the versatility of, of Noir. I think Noir is... Uh, is on point. Let's see here what we have that I can that I can. I think I can use the angelic more. It's more appropriate for an O. I'm gonna do an O there, and then I'm gonna turn off this reverb, and I'm gonna use mine, which is uh, black hole. Black hole is my go-to. Some nice mix there. change that to a different instrument um maybe the horn goes there um oh this is fun <laughs> so i want to do uh, here i want to do a little bit of a uh, st some string orchestration here um if you allow me the time uh, i'm gonna start with the cello and i'm gonna do the 
combined legato on this one. Let's not forget the stupid thing here, which I absolutely hate. Oh man, I appreciate it. Yeah, this is fun. This is uh, this is cool. So the, here I'm gonna really take advantage of my um, uh, dynamic range. Yeah, go that, go all the way up there. I really do want that pianissimo, or. triggered something it should not have been triggered I don't know so it does ignore CC1 a little bit which is a bit of a yeah bit of a bust I have to I have to admit but that's okay work with what we got eventually I would change this to the Tina Gua one So this is completely ignoring the CC1 signal. Hello? What the? Okay, that's a bug. Uh oh, audio, audio imperia. Uh oh, what the? Why is this? Yeah, I don't know what what that was. Bugs. Then on top of that, I am going to put a viola, baby. Viola, 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 viola. We are going to get dynamic range all the way up as well for this. Uh, I'll keep that one for now, and then we're going to change it. I'm going to change it to your reverb. very good for piano passages I gotta be honest so something triggers that makes the dynamic range uh, jump away. <laughs> that was weird. What is it? Which CC it's doing?
<laughs> my platform M, uh, it's mapped really weird. So that's why that's what's happening. So something triggers the, the hell out of this. And uh, that's no bueno. So for piano passages, this is not advisable. <laughs> that's what I'm learning right now. Um, let's see. Okay, so there is something at the beginning here that is triggering a CC that should not be triggered. CC 17 and CC 37 and 16. That's what it is. And I don't know why. Where is the CC being triggered from? I have no idea. That is just not very good. Where is this 37? Where is it being triggered? Absolutely unacceptable, folks. I don't know what this is about. Aftertouch. I need to filter after the chat. I never use it. Never used it once. That's more like it. CC 37 and CC 17 and 16 are being triggered. Beats me. Beats me. So, uh, I want a different solo instrument there that takes over. Maybe the flute, more like a fantasy sort of flute. Um, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not really putting a lot of effort into this, but maybe a noble. No. More like a... Yeah. That's kind of horn. Can't hurt. Can't hurt. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, dear. Oh, we're back. Oh my goodness. I don't know what happened there. Internet is fussing about. Um, that's kind of sad. Oh, let's let's keep going. Still loving how this flows together. This is something I occasionally managed to achieve. <laughs> oh no, dude. I trust me. This is um, achieving a good flow. It's it's tough. It's not easy. Anyway, I don't know what that was. I think the internet was like being weird uh, for a second. Uh, I disconnected the stream and then I, I reconnected it back on. I think that was weird. That was really, really weird. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's crack on. Black hole. Mabu. Putting them together, putting all these uh, cool solo instruments together, I think I think they're beautiful. Uh, but I still think that they they really shine in very specific situation and very specific scenarios. I'm 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 realizing now as I'm layering down the strings, um, they're really not cut out for quiet parts, which is a little bit like Audio Audio Imperius Legacy in, in a sense, like they quiet stuff. 
work. Just uh, Audio Imperial seems to have, you know, more of focus on loud and banging, <laughs> which is it's fine. It's great. Uh, it, it's 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 great stuff. I am I definitely don't complain about that. You do need loud and banging most of the times. But the strings that I'm seeing here are there's they struggle a little bit, especially with these weird CC that I have to figure out where they're coming from. Because I'm sure it's not the I don't think it's the library's fault. I think it's some something is sending weird um, CC signals from my system, and I don't know what it is. But these are struggling a little bit to be nice and quiet and submissive. See, there's there's no like quiet dynamics because there there is no quiet dynamics meaning that like they didn't record the quiet dynamics on these ones they are they're meant to be you know bright and express uh, expressivo you know like they uh, I, I'm I'm making this library do something that is really not supposed to do uh, right now and I and, and I'm perfectly aware of it and the voice and the horn and the other instruments are working really, really well with this. Um, the strings are not capable of doing quiet stuff, which is fine, you know, which is which is what it is. Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think I'm going to go uh, ahead and shut down the stream right here. I'm having really weird technical issues today that I got to I got to figure out how to solve. But also, I'm going to go ahead and edit a video that I need to post. Stay tuned for other stuff because I got... Uh, hey, dude, thanks to you, man. Thank you for coming into the into the live stream. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. Um, anyway, I got a couple of videos in the pipeline on my YouTube channel. They're going to be about a cool stuff. Uh, my latest video that I posted was about Ethera Gold Sahara Voices. Go and check it out because that was... A Bangin', so good, so so good. Um, and I am working right now, just as a spoiler. What is this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm working, um, just as a hyping, <laughs> I'm working on a series about this guy, uh, the touchscreen and the touch OSC and how I set it up and how uh, and how everything works. I got a bunch of people asking me how I got to this point. And um, I'm going to make a series. I got already uh, two videos scripted. I am currently scripting the third and the fourth episode. But um, it is a crazy setup. I, I made it crazy because I'm crazy, fundamentally. <laughs> I like my toys. And it took me... Uh, thanks, man. And it took me um, years to to get to what you see here. Um, so it, this for sure, it's been an adventure learning, learning, learning and making a lot of mistakes. I'm still making a lot of mistakes in this. I, this is still not uh, quite the way I want it in sense of like, there's weird stuff happening and I need to figure out how to solve them. But anyway, m for the most part, this is very, very usable. And I, and a lot of people have asked me like, Hey dude, I, I, I want to know how to, go from a blank template to that. And I'm like, um, I think it's, I think it's, it, it's worth it to make a couple of videos on it. Cause it's, once you get a hang of it, it's just a matter of like doing it and, and you, and you do it anyway. So that's, that's in the pipeline, a video about that. It's in the pipeline. I got, um, a bunch of videos about like, uh, orchestral, uh, stuff, meaning, um, how to pan your orchestra, properly your individual instruments and you know other other stuff that that it's currently in the scripting process but um yeah 
So stay tuned, guys. I really appreciate every one of you that has come to the stream tonight and supported me and, and has followed me. I'm still trying to get my stuff together when it comes on this, to Twitch and get all my notifications up because a bunch of you have uh, have uh, followed me today and I just uh, d don't have any notifications set up on my OBS right now. It's really pathetic. I'm sorry. But anyway, you guys have a good night and thank you so much for stopping by and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.